Hey folks, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well, and welcome to another Biker Scran with Jeff and Dan. The uh, occasional series on the channel where I'll meet up with a couple of biker pals, we go out and get something to eat, and then we give you a bit of a rating on the overall biker joint. Well, this particular one is uh, a little bit more than that, something a bit special planned for today, so stick around, stay tuned, I'll tell you what we've got planned. Alrighty, so I said that we've got something a bit special planned today for this edition of Biker Scram, and uh, that is, for the first time ever, I'm going to be trying my hand at riding in a sidecar. At least I think that's what we're going to be doing. As I've uh, mentioned before, my friend Dan, uh, who we'll be meeting, is uh, a PR man. And one of the companies he represents is uh, Watsonian Squire, the sidecar manufacturer. They're based out in sort of the west-ish country, I'm not entirely sure where, uh, but we're going to go and see them after we've had a bite to eat. And hopefully myself and Jeff, Jeff also has never ridden in a sidecar or ridden a bike with a sidecar attached, between us we're going to see uh, how much fun we can have uh, riding those things. So that's going to be a great laugh I'm sure. Not too sure what to expect but everybody I've spoken to that have ever ridden with a sidecar before say it's great fun so I'm expecting that to be. Um, just to let you know where we are what's going on, you find me in Oxfordshire, I'm meeting up with the guys in Burford so I'm on the, uh, I think this is the A40 at the moment, stuck behind a tractor as you can see. So we're in Oxfordshire, it's a very hot day, it's currently 28 degrees centigrade as you can see so I think that's going to be a theme of the day it's going to be very much a hot and sweaty one in fact I think it's probably going to be the hottest day of the year I'm recording this on the 21st of July although I realize you're seeing this much later but uh, yeah this is what uh, summer looks like in the UK when it behaves itself beautiful beautiful day lots of traffic about because uh, the kids I think have just broken up from school so it is peak holiday time but anyway I'm going to meet the guys as I say up at Burford up at uh, Starbucks there uh, I've got about uh, 15 minutes to go. I'll uh, speak to you when I get there. Okay, so wind on 15 minutes or so, and you find me just in the Omberons of Burford. Temperature's now uh, gone up to about 29 degrees, according to the bike. Absolutely corking day. Now, what's the betting that Jeff and Dan are going to be here before me, even though we agreed to meet at 11.30? And it's now 11.24, so I'm six minutes early. I'll put mine on the fact they're both here already. Because they're such punctual chaps. We shall see. Alright, so the Starbucks itself that we're meeting at, I think it's just the other side of the roundabout. I'm not too sure. I had a look on Google Maps before I came out to do a bit of a recce. Uh, and it was a little chef then. <laughs> so I assume it's been taken over by Starbucks. Let's have a look. Oh, I can see some bikes in there. Let's head this way. Yes, look, they're both here already. And I'm four minutes early. I knew it. So, I'm with Jeff and Dan, two chaps, of course by now need no introduction. And uh, we've got a bit of an exciting day lined up today, haven't we? Because we've got more than just Scran going on, thanks to Dan. Dan, tell us a bit about it. Well, first of all, where are we going for the Scran? Today, TNF, we are going to the Flag and Whistle Cafe, which I think has been renamed recently, on the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Steam Railway. Ooh. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, have you been before? And what's the food like? Uh, I have been before. The food is substantial. Oh, that's good. I didn't have any breakfast. So that's <laughs> terrible, man. So we'll be going for the healthy Substantial option, salad for yeah, you. Yes, though. indeed, indeed. And then after that, I've already told people a bit of a hint about what we're doing, but we're off to ride in sidecars, because me and Jeff have never done that before. We, we are, indeed. We're off to Watsonian sidecars. They've been making them in the heart of England since 1912, and Big Ben, the boss, is going to uh, introduce you to the, to the dark art of driving a sidecar out here. Absolute winner. So that sounds like a great fun, doesn't it? So shall we uh, jump on the bikes and get on our way then? Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Alrighty, we are off in a loose formation. Already lost uh, Jeff ahead because of the traffic, but uh, heading into Burford. Lovely little town. Whenever I come through here, I always think of uh, Harry's Garage, a video channel I watch about cars. If you've not seen that, do check it out. It's with uh, Harry Metcalf, founder of Evo magazine. Brilliant uh, fella. And has a great YouTube channel. Right, let's just wait for Dan here. Right, we are back in convoy. Oh, what a beautiful day to be out on the bike, eh? What an absolute treat. Burford is one of those places that uh, is very touristy. Although at the moment it's looking surprisingly quiet. Given, as I say, it is uh, holidays proper now, it being late July. But a lovely town if you've never been. Lots of nice pubs and restaurants. Alright, so according to Dan, about a 35 minute ride to get to the Flag and Whistle. Now, 
as you may have gathered, Dan looked quite excited about the fact that it's uh, called the Flag and Whistle because I think it's an ex station and it does have some steam trains and Dan does love his steam trains. Now I'm not, uh, I'm not in any way into that sort of thing so you know, I don't want to upset Dan so I'm going to have to pretend like I like him and like I know what I'm talking about so just, uh, just bear with me on that, okay? Alright, speak to you when we get to the uh, Flag and Whistle. Alright, so we're not quite at the flag of whistle yet, but we are in Gloucestershire, which is quite exciting for me because I don't often come out this way. What an absolutely corking day it is, look at this. It's one of those glad to be alive type biking days. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that thought with you. There goes Dan taking the lead now. Dan, as ever, has done his uh, full homework and has got us some nice routes planned in today. So not only are we going to enjoy a bit of scran and a bit of sidecarring, but also uh, great days riding as well. So thank you, Dan, for putting the effort in. What cracking roads there are around here. Sometimes I uh, kind of forget that actually the Cotswolds, not only is it full of amazing Cotswolds towns, we just came through Stow in the Wold, but also if you catch them without the traffic, some absolutely amazing roads. Well, a bit of a convoy now, we're behind a scooter look and oh the joys of riding in a t-shirt and shorts and some sandals, eh? Yes, the joy when it's 28.5 uh, degrees out and you're riding not so much joyous when you come off and bounce along the ground but there we go, everyone at their own, eh? But not for me I'm an at-gap man, all the gear all the time Speaking of which, I've actually got a new airbag on today it's a new one from Furigan maybe I'll show it to you a bit later, it's uh, one of these clever ones that doesn't have a tether and you wear it under your jacket so uh, I think it might be the ideal solution to the airbag problem I used to have, well I have been wearing an airbag with a tether which has made me feel safer but the tether was a bit of a pain this one though it's all done with electronic magic anyway maybe I'll tell you a bit more about that a bit later doesn't it make a difference to the world when the sun comes out it's just absolutely beautiful out here today something about the light something about the temperature just great. And these roads around here, so grippy and nice and smooth. So we just arrived in Toddington, which is where I believe it is. Whoop. And uh, here it is, in fact. Almost missed it there. I'll follow Dan, because I think he's been here before. Yeah, crikey, this is a proper train spotter central. It's not just a calf, which is what I thought it was, with a bit of a railway theme. It's actually a railway <laughs> with a calf more like. Anyway, let's see what it's got to offer. So, we made it to the Flag and Whistle here at Tollington, one of Dan's favourite haunts, for uh, obvious reasons, you can see trainy type stuff behind us. And uh, the, the um, situation here is a bit different to when we went to Cafe and Machine, because it's now, we are Covid, well, not Covid free, but we're free of the rules. Well, we're, we're, so we actually went in and ordered, liberal didn't we? Now, Covid liberal. Exactly. But it's a very hot day, so instead of having the Covid restrictions, we've got menu restrictions. So, uh, what have you gone for? Pasty. Okay. Dan? Pasty. Okay, and I've gone for a salad. See? Uh, anyway, so we'll see what they're like when they turn up, but it's an absolutely beautiful day and a nice spot, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, Dan's had a bit of cake already. Homemade fruit loaf. And uh, how's, how's it starting? You know, how's the food seem like it's going to be? It's going to be difficult to beat that, actually. Okie okay, dokie, all right then. Have you no chip mountain today? No, well, uh, no, I have I have already been to the super sausage for my chip mountain this week. Okay, and, uh, I thought you were going to say for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> So um, no, ch no chip mountain today. So it's going to be difficult to do a comparative. Exactly. Yeah. But we'll try our best. All right. We'll oh, wait you're for just food. back from you're just back from Cornwall. Indeed. So, which so, is why I didn't do the pasty, to be fair, because I'm <laughs> sort of pasty out. Although it's difficult to have too many pasties, isn't it? I, I just want to make a small point here, sir. Are you trying to say that Dan was the only one who had the fruit loaf? Uh, quick! Stop uh, the camera. <laughs> No sooner did we stop talking about it than the food arrived. So there's the pasty, which uh, we'll see what it's like in externally. Looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Hand crimped, as, as yeah. you say. Yeah. Right, my salad. Jury's out a bit. Don't know if it's plastic ham or the real thing. We'll see. And you reckon that's spray and A's on there as well? Yeah. Well, if you've been watching Peter Crouch's podcast, they've come up with this idea of spray and A's. Yeah. So it's a mayonnaise actually in a spray 
bottle. Sounds like a good idea to me. Well, I think there's a bit of mustard seed in there, which yeah. wouldn't spray very successfully, would it? No, no, that's fine. All right, go for it, Dan. Let's see what the uh, first bite. Oh my word, there's a bit of tissue issue going on there, well, but they, luckily you're good at that. They've sort done thing, this aren't thing you? that they do in, in, in sort of Costa Coffee and stuff where they, 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 they put the food on top of the napkin. I don't understand that's that. that. What's that all about? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense, does it? It's ruined before you even need it. Anyway. Shall we, shall we dissect? Yes, yes, yes. Any see steam coming like. out? Oh, it looks quite meaty. Okay. It's all meat. Okay. Are meat? Well, we'll save you the displeasure of watching us eat and we'll tell you what it's like when we get to the end. Right, the plates are empty, which is always a good sign. I have to say, my salad actually was very nice, much better than it looked. How was the pasty, gents? Very spicy, actually. Was it? Yes, was I it? was quite impressed with that. Dan's a bit yeah. of a spicy man. How did you find it on the spice well, front, Dan? It, it was, it, it, yeah, it would have peppery, I think. Is was it? Yes, peppery, peppery. Yeah. peppery. Yes, rem peppery in remember a... in your last nachos, yes. It yes. Was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, spicy and spicy. <laughs> peppery in a good way, or? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Okay, yeah and awesome. and uh, it was it was not like a British Rail Traveller's Fair pasty. Yeah. It was not grey inside and out, and, and the pastry was actually the pastry was quite light. It was so yeah, more like the real thing. Yeah. And my, my ham, made, I would say. Excellent. My ham turned out not to be plastic as well, which was great. And the, and the spray and A's was very tasty. Some sort of mustardy thing going on. So, <laughs> so thumbs up for the food. What was, I didn't actually pay for this one. Uh, Dan did. What was the pricing like here? Uh, yeah, yeah, very reasonable. I mean, I, I can't quite remember. I, I think it, it was for. £2.95, I think. For, 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 it? for th three drinks, a salad and two pasties and a slice of cake came to less than 20 pounds. Wow, I would say that's pretty blooming excellent yeah. value, wouldn't you? Yeah, very good. Just look. Oh my word. We've had a steam train go past. We did, we, sadly I missed that with the camera. There's a prairie tank with a rake of chocolate and cream coaches just for the Excellent, double Which bogey 232. Is that what they say? It's, it's, two, it's, it's, it's 262. Oh, two, did two, I get it right? 262 tank engine. Well, well, I don't know what they're they're getting technical. Anyway, so scores on the doors then, Jeff. Out of, uh, did we do this out of 10? I never know, or is it out of 5? It's out of 10 now. Okay, well, 10, okay, 10, 10. Yeah, right. I mean, what a game. Again, I didn't pay so valiant for money. Yeah, excellent, I'm excellent. going, yeah. I think it must be my turn next, so. As far as that goes, as a pasty in itself, I think, Nine out of ten. Wow, well, well. And uh, me for the salad and the ambiance and of the pricing as well, even though I didn't pay for it. I think I'm going to go for a nine as well. Yeah, excellent, yeah, uh, excellent not? place. And now peer pressure is on Dan now. Well, as you know, I always go for eight out of ten. That's my, my default score. Yep. Um, but the prairie tank gets an extra point, so we're nine out of ten. Wow, I think that's possibly one of the highest scoring yet, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So it's a thumbs up all round for the flag and whistle. So next time, Jeff's already revealed he's going to pay, we're going to have to find somewhere expensive. Manuel Katze is on. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's why near, not? Near your, in your neck of the woods as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they won't mind us turn up on the bikes. <laughs> well, I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a go. Sure? All right. So um, where are we going to next for the sidecars then? Where's the we whereabouts are, is that? We are heading to Broadway, right. which we will give our regards. And then we're going to head up Fish Hill. <laughs> oh, which is, I love that. Yeah, oh. and then uh, thence to Blockley near Morton in Marsh to what's only inside cars. Excellent. We'll see you on the road. Right, so we're just leaving the uh, flag and whistle, and uh, Jeff has spotted what he describes as a proper. A proper triumph. Right, okay, there we go. Check this out. So, what is it then? American style bars. Don't ask me. Look at that tax disc. Remember those? A little bit out of date, November 67. Oh, the, the colour. See, Triumph could do colours in those no, days, no, couldn't no, they? Look at that. 500. I like that. 500, no. Queen's Award to industry lot. That's how yeah. yeah. you know someone's going to go down the tubes. They get the Queen's Award for Yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's <laughs> that. Right, a 20 minute ride to uh, Watsonian. Uh, 28 degrees still, still feeling pretty darn warm. But I ain't complaining, it's been a long time coming this summer. And now we uh, run the gauntlet across this kitty litter. <laughs> Which isn't as bad as the stuff we had coming out last time of caffeine and machine when I was on the gold wing. At least the GS is built for this sort of game. And it handles it with aplomb. Well that was a fun little stop there at uh, the flag and whistle. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't have the camera running. It's always the case when a couple of steam trains actually pulled in and pulled away. They sounded great and uh, Dan was in his element. So uh, that was all good fun. Short ride now down some of these amazing roads. Nice and grippy in the heat. The Watsonian to check out the sidecars. And I think the way it's going to work is uh, I'm going to have a little go uh, in a sidecar, see if I can handle it uh, with the guy from Watsonian. And then Jeff's going to do the same. So I'll. Uh, give you a bit about what it's like for me as a driver of a sidecar and then we'll film Jeff doing the same so we hope it should be a bit of fun. Talking of lovely little Cotswold towns as we were earlier on the way in this is the town of Broadway again a lovely little spot packed today with tourists as it often is on a day like today 
there's something about these uh, sandstone Cotswold stone buildings that really appeals to me really nice spot so this is Fish Hill one of the local landmarks and bikers favorites of this area a few hairpins pinned together makes for some fun riding if the uh, it's traffic free but not doing too bad today to be fair another gorgeous Cotswold town this is Chipping Camden a lot of bikes out today good to see check out these buildings well this certainly isn't a place you'd stumble across by accident <laughs> These little villages are absolutely stunning. I've never been through these before because they're a bit off the beaten track, but uh, immaculately looked after and kept. They're really quite beautiful. All right then, here we are at Watsonian Motorcycle and Sidecar Company. Let's go and find out what sidecars are all about with Watsonian. Cool. Really? So this is Big Ben. Ben's the man with the Jaffa Cakes. Now we were just having slightly melted Jaffa Cakes as you can see. Now we're having a bit of a debate about Jaffa Cakes because I love biscuit me. So when I see a Jaffa Cake and it tastes like a cake, it's just an affront to biscuitry. How, how does that work? So what, well, what, what do you call it? It's, a Jaffa cake. it's, a it's cake. not called a Jaffa Biscuit is it? No but it looks like a biscuit doesn't it? No it looks like a oh, cake. No. What do you think Dan? You're, you're a bit more sensible when it comes to matters of food. Well, it's been settled in a court of law, they're cakes. Is that? Indeed. So, I can't have one because I'm, I'm a biscuit man. Anyway, end of the Jaff Cake discussion. Thank you very much for the offer, but I will refuse. Thank you. <laughs> so, all sorts of bikes here then. Well, a lot of Royal Enfields, put it that way. Himalayan is how it's properly pronounced. Did you know that? I did not know that. There you go. I've heard that. Yep, that's how the that Indians pronounce it. Like, so, um, must be right. And a Krapovich or an Akropovich, depending on how the right way is to say that. Oh, no, <laughs> don't let's not go there. What a nightmare. So, we're in the heart of Watson, and it turns out Dan's going to give us a bit of a tour. Check this out. So, this is, this is where the magic begins. It's the metal shop, and everything starts with metal tubing. And these metal tubes are bent and straight and, and pulled into shape. Yep. Until you end up with bits. Looks difficult, looks difficult. Look, look like this. Fantastic. Which will go to form the frames of the sidecar. Real. Small which is. Then, once we've done that, we take the bent bits. If you go down the steps. So I'm just I'm intrigued by these old lathes. These are sorry, these are just these machinery in here is like stuff. Well, how old is that lathe I wonder? It's a triumph as well, look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> um, Probably 1950s or 60s. That is a proper, that is a proper lathe, isn't it? Yeah. Goodness me. Excellent. Small central. Oh, this. Cool. Alan Milliard, I'd love it in here. <laughs> Brilliant. What is this? This is a weird milling machine. Is that a milling machine or what is that? I don't know what that is. But it, it looks dangerous and I like that. <laughs> yeah, some sort of cutter. Right, moving on. Okay, so that's the bendy bits. Too much kit there for Yes, dude, true. Then goes into the welding bay. Well, it's put on a jig and welded into shape. Radio. Welding, in case you couldn't hear us. Radio on. That'll be a copyright violation issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true actually. Once it's all been welded into shape, yep. it goes off to be powder coated. Yep. Um, and then, I'm just going to try and find something with, uh, with, a, with a frame on oh, it. Oh, look at that. That's one of those um, new beamers, isn't it? It is. This is a, a project we worked on for BMW for the Goodwood Festival. Yep. Um, so uh, once the frame comes back, we then need to fit the sidecar body onto it. The sidecar bodies are moulded externally from here. And they're fibreglass, I take it. They're full, full fibreglass. And then when the fibreglass body comes back here... R18, that's what I was trying to think of. Yes. BMW R18. Uh, it's, it's fitted out. So these are two that are ready to be crated and exported. Right. So you see these, these are... Looks like a... Like a bomb from a Lancaster, <laughs> doesn't it? Is that, is that the meteor? 
Uh, it's, it's called the Prescott now. Because it, it was originally from the drop tanks on the meteor fires. Yeah, I've got a vague meteors. idea there was something like that. Yeah, yeah. After after the war, when they had a few left over. Yeah, yeah it, was indeed. it was. Yeah, it was absolutely. It was made from spun fiberglass originally. Yeah. Right. Um, but the problem is that they they all rotted. Okay. I love this. Beautiful, so that's cast especially for us. That's yeah. actually a, that's a, a modern. That's actually that was developed about five years ago. Right. It's looks good. Looks good, but doesn't it? it? it but it, everything's complicated because it's it's cast. Then it has to be taken away and polished. Yeah. So yeah. there's so many stages to everything that's done. Right. And then the side cars are. Yeah, I'm finished. It's just a glass fibre shell. This one's been painted. Yeah. Um, so then they have to be trimmed out with the carpet inside seat needs to be put in, this one's got luggage rails on it, the screen has to be fitted, we make the screens in house, we put these strips on the... Oh yeah, road glide. These strips are put on the nose and all trimmed out. So originally these... Well, I thought they were part of the construction but no. that's just trimmed just for so aesthetics. Originally the sidecar body would have been on a wood frame and with fabric stretched over it or possibly aluminium panels right, or even right. wood panels. Yeah. And in, in about 1965, in 1965, Watsonia made a retro sidecar. This is a <laughs> 1960s retro sidecar, which is based on a 1930s design. And we still make You're it. You're following today. this? Right, good, excellent. Well, it looks the biz, doesn't it? Right, and then finally, fitted to the motorcycle. Okay. And this is, there's a bit of a dark art to this. You need at least four arms. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yep. And they have to be triangulated for stresses and strains so the whole thing doesn't fold in on itself. Okay, and the weight has to be within the triangle? Yes, so you've got, uh, you need to, the wheel, sidecar wheel needs to be forward of the rear wheel of the motorcycle but not by too much. Right. Then the sidecar, the nose of the sidecar needs to point in very, very slightly. Toe towards, in. Yeah. Toe in, yeah. very yeah. good. Yeah. There you go, technical term. And it also needs to lean out very slightly. Oh, what's that called? Splay. Lean out. Oh, is it? Okay, right. Toe right. in, lean out. Right, all right. Um, and, and that's because of the camber on the road. Of course, yeah, yeah, so it keeps it. It's so almost like dihedral on an aircraft. Oh. No, yes, I, I, I was wondering when you were going to pick up Okay, right. Or is it <laughs> anhedral? Anyway. <laughs> Splendid. And on this particular outfit, we've had to put a little recess in the side. Oh yeah, to fit the cylinder. Because the cylinders are so big. Excellent. Brilliant. Right, Brill. Turns out Dan knows quite a lot about this stuff, doesn't he? Thank you, Dan. You can, you can fool some of the people some of the time. <laughs> Before we get to the riding, I just happened to notice in this building over here some interesting looking bits and pieces. So we've got a uh, V-Strom with a sidecar. Looks nice, doesn't it? Yes. Works? Yes, that's a really good, some, a couple of really important points on this sidecar outfit. Yep. First of all, if you look into the sidecar, there are some hoops on the floor, yep. just by the side of the seat. Uh, I think we can see them. Yeah. And they are so you can put the lash your dog lead on, so when you're taking your faithful friend for a ride, Brill. they don't get overexcited and jump out of the sidecar Excellent. with traffic lights to chase a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Brill. In terms of sidecar fitting, you can see that for this bike, because it hasn't got traditional steel tubular frame, yep. it's got a subframe built. Oh yeah, so wow. So there's something to attach the sidecar to. Oh yeah, right, cool. I was gonna ask that, Dan, actually, because I mean, when sidecars were in their heyday, everything was tube frame. Yeah. And nowadays, things aren't tube framed, and engines are stress members and all that sort of thing. And so, yeah, how exactly do you attach a sidecar to something that hasn't got a tube frame? Well, you build a tube frame, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah. of course, I mean, that, that adds to the cost and complication. Yeah. yeah. So the, the most popular bikes for fitting sidecars to are Harley Davidson's, Triumph Bonneville's, and the new Royal Enfield Interceptors in particular. Yeah, of course, yeah. And again, yeah. we've got an Interceptor outfit over there, and as you'll see, it's a really straightforward fit. Just the four of it. It's got a little subframe underneath it, but it's, again, it's a very, very simple subframe. Cool. And it looks the beers on there, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it looks like it should be there. Yeah, it does. It looks very, very traditional. Cool. Right, should we go and try them out? Let's go and try it out. Right, is there a particular way I need to uh, embark upon the vehicle? Stand on the seat. Oh, God, I'm going to put a big... Boot mark on it now. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, fair dues. We're in. Oh, oh, it's a uh, toasty in here, lads. Right, far away. <laughs> Cheers. Well, so far so good. <laughs> yep. 
Oh yeah, yep. Okay, right Okay. <laughs> hey! Brilliant. Yep, yep. Hey! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, my turn at the wheel. This is pretty scary stuff. I get the theory. The practice may be different. It struck me there's more similarity with flying a Piper Cub than actually uh, riding a motorcycle, but we'll see. So we're in first. We're in first. Okay. Sounds easy so far. Let's see. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> Blimey. All that not putting your foot down thing's difficult, isn't it? Holy cow! Whoa! Those left turns are horrible, aren't they? Okay. Okay, that makes sense. It does. Looking further in the distance is the key. And we slow down for this bump, yeah? Cool! As soon as you apply the brakes, the pressure on the bars, whee, that's quite... Yep. Yeah, you have to give it a real heave, don't you? Whoa, second gear! Woo! <laughs> you have to constantly get, concentrate on that steering, don't you? Feel like I'm weaving all over the place. Okay, round the roundabout. Yeah, okay. And you have to give it a lot of pressure on the steering. Way. <laughs> Temptation to be foot foot down is outrageous. Yep. And round we go. Nothing coming. Wow, that is tight, man. Doing this on the road would be quite something. How did 1950s man do this straight off with no training? Yeah, it must have been. Hello. He's wondering what the heck we're doing. Okay. Cool. Leap in gear. Well, thank you, sir. That was absolutely brilliant. You may not have thought so, but I thought it was great fun. Right, Jeff, you'll enjoy that. Fabulous. That was great. Yeah, thanks. Brilliant. <laughs> that is so counterintuitive. It's untrue. Good luck, Jeffrey. I know you used to fly our old aeroplane, so uh, well, best of luck to you. Sir. Thank you very much. This I'll be filming you, okay? <laughs> The first lesson I ever had in a tail dragger aeroplane. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's similar dynamics actually, isn't it? Because the three points of contact on the ground, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and the fact that you have to steer the opposite way with throttle is like the torque in an aeroplane engine. And the fact you have to give it opposite rudder, isn't it? So if you transpose your hands and feet, think you're flying, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, Jeff and I used to fly in the same aeroplane group. That's how we know each other. And uh, I have to say, there seems to be quite a lot in common with flying a tail dragger aeroplane as there is with driving a sidecar outfit, it seems, if that sounds odd, but it is true, any other sidecar outfit drivers and tail dragger plane pilots will tell you it's true. Anyway, let's see how Jeff gets on with his first corner here. I'm going to hide behind this sign. This is 
is encouraging. The bike and sidecar appear to be in one piece. Turns on a sixpence, this thing. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Tricky, isn't it? <laughs> More spirit required. <laughs> All right, well, having had the uh, teaching, Ben has very kindly offered to take me out on the open road so I can see what this thing can really do. Now, in the past, I've always been a bit wary of people that say, watch this, but let's see what happens. Here we are, the open road. This is so cool. You're so low to the ground in this uh, sidecar that it feels like you're doing 100 miles an hour, even though we're probably doing about 30. It's a great way for the non-motorcyclists to have a feel of what motorcycling's like. You certainly get the thrill of speed in this. Nice and protected from the wind as well with this great windshield. Oh, left-hander. These Enfields really do sound good, especially when you're sat right next to the engine. Cool. <laughs> ben certainly knows his stuff. Brilliant. I have to say, it's surprisingly comfortable here. The seat and the suspension do a good job. I have to say, I'd never thought of the... Uh, Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 is a particularly sporty bike before, but when you're sat in here, because you're low, I, I just the acceleration feels so much faster than I'm used to. When I'm on the bike and I'm holding the handlebars and I'm gripped against acceleration, it doesn't feel anywhere near as exhilarating as in here. <laughs> and the amount of roll is incredible around the corners. Reminds me very much of being in that Morgan three-wheeler I drove a few months back at Crazy Horse. Similar sort of grin factor. And before any smart Alex in the comments say, you don't technically have to be wearing a helmet when you're in a sidecar. I'm only wearing mine because uh, I've got the mic and the camera set up. That plus I'm a bit frightened. <laughs> this is fabulous. Well, what fabulous fun that was. Splendid! Right. <laughs> that was fabulous, thank you, Ben. No that on the open road, that is something else, isn't it? On those straights, when you get a bit of lick on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Brilliant. Go, I've never thought of an Enfield 650 as a sporty bike before. <laughs> when you're in here, you can really feel the acceleration more. I think it's because you're not gripping all the handlebars. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're sat in here and you're like thrown back in the seat and it's a flipping Enfield. What's going on? Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thoroughly enjoyed that. Oh, ah. So there we go, that's the end of another biker scram with Jeff and Dan as Dan heads off ahead of me. I uh, made the error of not saying cheerio on camera to the chaps, I do apologise. But uh, thanks to Jeff and Dan once again for coming out and uh, having a great day on the bikes. Hope you enjoyed that. Something a bit different on the sidecars there. That was uh, really great fun. So thank you to uh, Ben from Watsonian Sidecars for sorting that out. Really enjoyed that. And uh, thank you as ever to you for watching. Right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.